Well, good morning everybody. My name is Dr. J.D. Swanson. I'm the author of Karate Science, for those who don't know me. And this is 15 Minutes of Thought, I think, Volume 18. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue on from yesterday and talk about hair nida, um, and in particular the second half. So what we did last time was we covered hair, hair, move forward all the way through to the nukate. We're going to move on from that particular position. I'm going to come up with some of my important points as we go through this. So without further ado, let's get started. Oops. Good, so many of the points that I actually cover in the second half of Hair Nida, and I've covered in other 15 minutes of thought. So I'm gonna briefly bring them up, but what I do is I encourage you to go back and look at um, important points of Hair Shoran um, much earlier, and also the Gyaku Hamai, where I actually talk about the stance. I'll cover the, the ideas briefly here, but only little bits and bobs. So, where we are is we've finished out with the Tate Nukate. We've fired out, made the Zenkutsudachi, fired out like so. The next motion, how you want to think about it, if you want to switch, remember if you, as you make the turn, you want to make the block almost immediate, almost as fast as you can. Don't sit there and sort of wait, 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 and then go, oh, that's right, I have to block. Don't go around that way. So a lot of people will sit there, they wait, they come around, they, oh, and then remember their arms. Don't. What you want to do is you want to get around as quickly as possible, right? So this particular block requires you to sit, make the block, and then turn. So allow, what, there's two things I do. One, I make the block as quickly as possible. Number two, I lift the toes of my front foot as a training aid. I don't do this all the time, but what that encouraged me to do is put my weight back in my heel, and I find it personally much easier to spin in this particular turn on my heel. I lift my toes, like so, and then from here I block, and then I can go quickly. The last piece as well is this construction here of this front leg is back stance. There's no change effectively. From here, nice and simple, right? We do our first block, come around, from here moving, cover, block. So as you move, as you think about the covers in these motions, Think about where the opponent's coming from. The wide ranging turn, okay, in these, and the reason why you're standing on, where you go into an online position and then step on a 45, is because your opponent is coming in from this 30 degree angle. And what this does is this gives you the ability to sweep anything coming around with both hands. So it's that idea of that double deflection is what the, what the block gives you. As you move into the next movement, it's the same idea. Don't just stand at nothing and then suddenly block. Be accurate and aware of where your opponent is coming in from. Be aware of where they're coming in. A couple of other things that are important. Don't move in and have these big, this big gap here. Just doesn't look classy. Rather, squeeze and point, squeeze and point squeeze and point. The load of the block initially here, eventually you can curve it up to make it more functional, right, as you move on. So you have all of those sorts of movements. You come in, you do the turn, you cover, you cover, you cover, and now from here we go to the Gaku Hamein. So what I would like you to do is practice that turn, then the step, 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 step. Pay attention to the squeeze of the legs each time. Pay attention to what your hands are doing. Imagine the movement, not just blocking. You're blocking here, you're blocking here, you're striking or blocking here. One, two, three, you've got all of these options available to you. Pay attention to the in-between pieces is something that Steve Ubel always says. So use that. Right, so press pause, give that a go. <coughs> Excellent. Okay, the next line, we're here. We're in the, the, the block. And if you remember rightly, you want to shift, keep your arm close to your body. Kanazawa sensei always used to open, <coughs> wind in. For us, what I find is JK tends to hold tight. So as you make the gyaku hamae, pull, pull, <coughs> and expand. Both legs squeeze. Why gyaku hamae in this kata? 
If you remember rightly, the theme in Han Nidan is you're constantly late, at least in my interpretation. So everything in this is, oh, oh, oh goodness, that was lucky. Oh, that was lucky. Right, and same thing here. If I think about this, and if I think about my body center moving towards a target, right? Remember, distance is directly proportional to time. If I'm here, and I made, say, Uchuke, I've moved a long distance towards my opponent in Zenku Tsudachi. If I'm here, and I made Sotuke, oh, again, I've moved a long distance towards. By going the Gyaku Hamai route, it keeps my body center relatively back, but gives me all the advantage of having my weight forward in the front leg. Something that's important about distance, and we'll talk about this later as we move into more free type stuff, is that your distance from your opponent is always relative to the weight bearing leg. Hence why we don't use kokutsudachi in this case. We'd be too far away to be able to cover the distance that we need. So what happens is by going into gyakuhamei, my weight bearing leg is my front leg. And also, but what I'm doing is I'm not driving my body center into the target like the theme in Han Shodan. Han Shodan's theme is about crossing that distance and really attacking the attacker in a way. This one, it's about paying attention, keeping your body open, keeping the covers, keeping things open, and remaining in place here, keeping this type of position. From here, from the Gyakuhamai, you make the front kick and the punch, don't kick, place, punch. Again, you may as well just do a push up on them. Instead, think about connecting that driving leg with the punch. That's the underlying theme here. So if we're here, feel more kick, bang. So you end up with almost hook this before that front leg hits. You want that full expansion as you drive your body weight into the target. This front leg simply acts as a break. It stops you from falling on your face. So as you're here, think, one, turn, then kick, here. Then from here, the idea is to reload. So you reload here, I connect here, elbow, hip, things that we've been talking about, they pull together. Again, what's happening here is my body center does shift back. My body center, but my shoulder remains in place. So all I'm doing here is keeping my blocking arm at the same position, pulling my body center slightly back, but really not giving up that much distance to my opponent. It gives me a little bit of room to be able to maneuver because I'm late, but it gives me the ability to not really shift back like you would if you shifted into, say, Kokutsudach. So once again, we're here, we shift, think both legs, push up, push up, kick, punch, one, two, then reload, Kick, punch, this kind of feeling. From here, the last motion, multiple ways that you can go into the marote uke from here. So one of the classics is of course into just cup and saucer, push forward. Another way that I was taught, um, and again it was common with Kanazawa sensei, was rotating this hand out and placing this hand down just on the curve of your tricep. So the idea was, was here, curve and push. Whatever you do, even if it's a derivative of that and it becomes sort of more relaxed, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure that whatever your purpose is, as you make this load, that it has purpose, that it has reason, right? If we're here, I can imagine I'm clearing my way and coming in. If I'm here pulling, right? Think about the action that you're doing and why you do that action. That's the most important piece. The second thing with Marote Uke is as you're loaded here, make sure that these two knuckles push in just above the funny bone here. Not underneath, not here, not here, here. This is really important because one, this is a reinforcing block or it's augmented block. So that doesn't mean there's all this push this way. If I push too far underneath, I'm going to take my funny bone, that sucks, right? If I'm here and I'm pushing my whole fist in, that disconnects my elbow from the rest of my body. I want to push in just these two knuckles in this way. That connects this in, connects this block here. 
There's some other elements to it, but we'll come back to those in a second. So what I'd like you to do from here is practice that line. Go from here, think about all the good pieces that we've talked about so far. So what I would like you to do is go through that and then we'll come back to that line and give you some other details to work on. So with that, press pause, give it a go. Excellent, okay. So the next thing that I want you to think about, one is with the Marote cane. So from here, all blocks, I have a theory that most of the blocks in karate are based off geramrai, aguke, sotuke, uchuke, or shutuke. They're just derivatives of those five blocks. So if you're doing jujuke, it's geramrai with a punch. If you're doing marote uke, it's uchuke, augmented. Right? And so the, the purpose of a lot of these other blocks, like marote, juji, and so forth, is to get the other hand into play. Not have it sitting back on the hip, but rather keep it there. This gives you the benefit if basically I'm here, I'm halfway through a punch at this point. The augmentation doesn't necessarily, it can mean to augment and add force to the block in the direction you want. But what it can also mean is that it's augmenting your defense. For example, if an attack comes in, I may do block, hit, right? I, I, I may come in, I may use this hand to block, this one to hit. It's about keeping both hands in play. So the feeling I want with the marote is not this pushing sort of in this direction, right, over here, but rather pushing in this direction. So have that feeling, even though this comes across your body, have the feeling of it coming across, but have the feeling of everything wanting to drive into your target. This is why it's done in Zenkutsudachi rather than Kokutsudachi in this particular case. You're going through your opponent. The second thing I want you to think about is think about the actual timing of these techniques. And the way I imagine it is that I'm in sort of this real sort of position. So I'll sort of talk you through it. We're here, everything's cool and calm, all of a sudden, oh, in comes somebody. Now, kick, punch, whoa, that was like a kick, punch, boom. So have that particular feeling. Have the idea of, whoa, here they come, boom, boom, gotcha, oh, that was lucky, kick, boom, bang have that flavor in there, have that taste. So with that, think one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Have that particular timing as you go down that line. And with that, press pause, play with those two things for a little bit and we'll come back. <clears throat> okay, good. So we've gone through that line. Now from here, let's finish off. So this time, what we do is we're going to come round into the Ganamarai. So it's here, we've just finished with the Marote. We turn in and we block. The thing that's most important here, and if you look at the hand shot on discussion a while ago, is again all those same things. For me, I rotate on the ball, I do the block as, as quick as I can, right from the beginning. I'm still paying attention to how my block's loading, right? I'm still paying attention to all the pieces of the block. I'm still paying attention to make sure I'm covered, but I'm moving fast, yeah? The second thing is that this particular stance is online, right? That means that my heels, if I look at sort of, you can't really see them, but if I imagine that I'm on line here, if this is the straight line of the cutter to you, my heels, are in line with the block like so. So make sure that you're not shoulder width apart in this particular motion. It's here and in line. Why you may ask? Well, the answer is the same as what it was when we were doing the um, shiduke. Your attacker is coming in from the 45 degrees. So remember, kata is kind of interesting. As I think, interpret that last line. We're here, the kata teaches me block, kick, punch. Okay, so I've practiced at one side. Block, kick, punch. I've practiced at the other side. In theory, my opponents would be right here, but what I do is I now clear space to get them out of the way. This is what happens at the end. This is how I finish decisively my opponent, whether it's a throw application, whether it's a striking application, whether it's blocking and attacking application. Whatever flavor you have this, it's clearing that space and destroying that opponent. You could have done it in theory 
from the first one. So what we do is we practice at both sides, then take an extra step. Your opponents, therefore, are now sort of in this position, are back here. So by them coming back here and me stepping on in line, what that means is that an inline Zenkutsu Dach is actually a Zenkutsu Dach to a 30 degree angle. Right? If I go square, that here, in line, it's 30 degrees. So you're allowing that. Hence the next step, which is the cover or grab. I imagine I'm just grabbing hold of somebody. Right? Grab and argue. Okay. From here, back in line, grab, argue. Okay. And the ki there. So you want to imagine that piece. So as you do that rotation, control the rotation, control the step, make the turn, and feel that push and drive of this leg. Again, this and this happening together as you come round. Then grab, rotate here, and rotate as you go through. So give that a go, press pause, practice those last few pieces of the cut. Very good. So the last thing I want to sort of just leave you just with, with a thought. And when I think about kata, remember kata in my mind is about teaching your body how to move. That's the key. Right, so what you can do is if your body understands how to move, what you can do is you can then take elements of the kata and dirty them up. And um, you know, you see this a lot in Ian Abernethy's kata based sparring. You see a lot of it in um, people that really have sort of taken that, that to the extreme. My belief is that you must practice the classic form, the classic piece as hard and as fast and as often as you can, because that teaches you how to move. The next piece is as you start to look at application, your application, the, because your body understands how to move, the application becomes very fluid. You can use the same technique to defend yourself in almost any way. If you take something simple, right, like the, um, say the shutukes, right, I can move through, from here I'm covering Gaidan, I'm covering Jordan, I'm covering Chudan, almost the entire time. Any of these can be strikes, right, depending on what I need at the time. So don't shoehorn yourself into this particular movement is blocking a straight punch or blocking a hooking punch or whatever. What, what you're doing is you're teaching your body to be able to move reactively. The other thing that you can do is also understand the principles behind the motion. So when you make, for example, the, the first movement right here, what's that saying? Drop your body weight, lift your arms up. Then from here, thinking like here, then from here, shift, cover your body again, then shift. You can use these natural reactions to be able to fight your way out, right? Think about that movement in the back, right? Someone's coming in, you cut the angle, kick the knee, bang, and just hit them over the head, right? This kind of idea. So this dirtying of the cutter, whoa, <coughs> becomes useful in the way that you start to teach your body how to move. Again, by understanding Gyaku Hamai, I understand and I'm in a good position to be able to fire that low kick to the knee. From there, as they go down, I know that as my body weight drops, because I've practiced good timing, good driving, I can now throw this technique as they go down. And it's that kind of flavor, that kind of feeling that you want to be able to develop into your kata. It's almost the same way as saying kihon, fundamental, jiu, free, and then I call it dirty for the last one. So play with that. I hope those ideas help and look forward to talking to you soon. Take care. Hey, us.